Alright guys, I'm going to be watching how does the SCP animation actually make money. I've been kind of wondering this for a while, but I think they get funded by like the United Nations or something like that. So like, they don't have to deal with SCPs, but um, we're going to find out in the video. Let's get into it. It is an old adage that money makes the world go round. And when you work for the SCP Foundation, that same money can keep the world from ending. Think for a second about the kind of absurd bills that the SCP Foundation racks up. They need to pay for the upkeep on hundreds of facilities while also paying for thousands of employees, as well as stipends for the families of the many, 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 many members of personnel who are killed in the line of duty. They also need to pay for the equipment required to do their jobs, a lot of which they need to develop themselves, as well as the expenses of varied containment procedures for well over 6,000 different anomalies each one requiring its own unique treatment. And that's not even factoring in the costs of their various experiments, vehicles, weaponry, and cover-up operations. To say the Foundation would need billions upon billions of dollars to do what they do is probably lowballing it. So today, we feel like asking the big question. How does the SCP Foundation make all this money? Because personally, we just don't think the biannual Foundation bake sale is going to cover the price tag on this thing. First, we're going to what? explore the different ways the Foundation probably brings in its obscene budget through more traditional means. But if you stick around to the end, we'll explore some of the much more strange and exciting ways the Foundation can financially exploit its vast cache of anomalies. Yo, yeah, this sound really good. Hold up. Hold up. Please. As well as a way that you, that's right, out. you, can work? help. So buckle up as we tackle the most terrifying monster of all, budgeting. The most obvious means the Foundation has of scraping up a little extra cash is to cooperate with world governments. Obviously, the SCP Foundation isn't a puppet of the United Nations like the GOC. It operates with a high degree of autonomy that prevents its work from ever being biased by certain national or international interests. However, in order to do its work properly, it does collaborate with various governments across the globe. Naturally, as a result of this, it does receive assisted funding from governments when combating or containing anomalies that would present a threat to their national security. Think of it as a classic you scratch my back, I scratch yours situation. But seeing as people would notice every single government on Earth farming out billions of dollars for seemingly no reason that the profit could account for, it's clear that this only accounts for one of the SCP Foundation's multiple income streams. Where else is all the money coming from? Well, a phrase you've probably heard a lot on the videos on this channel is front businesses. As any members of the Mafia in our audience will already know, a front money? business is a seemingly legitimate company used to hide the operations of a more secretive or illicit business going on behind the scenes. Okay. Typically, okay. it's a boon for organized crime syndicates who need to justify the purchases of certain personnel or Wait. equipment. Or Don't tell me the SCP Foundation owns like a Walmart or like a McDonald's or something like that. But like, they're using it as a front and they have like... Oh my god, that's crazy. Or launder ill-gotten gains into clean, legitimate, taxable revenue streams. Cause trust us, kids. The only three letters scarier than SCP are IRS. The For SCP real? Foundation makes use of a huge number sense. of front organizations to both hide its operations and supplement its income. From chemical plants to office buildings to local bakeries, it is impossible to know just how many normal industries technically answer to the O5 Council high enough up the chain. For all you know, you could already be an employee of the SCP Foundation without even being aware of it. Income generated by the various front companies used by the Foundation are likely to make up a good chunk of their budget. Another key factor in the Foundation's profitability is technology. Given that the Foundation has gathered some of the greatest scientific and engineering minds in the world to protect humanity from anomalous forces, it goes without saying that they create some incredible technology, which may later trickle down into wider commercial and civilian use. And before you start saying this is crazy, it's actually an incredibly common practice with regular militaries all over the globe. Duct tape, superglue, GPS, silly putty, EpiPens, microwaves, and the internet were all made possible by military advancements. And with the Foundation having technology so advanced it puts even the most well-funded militaries to shame, it's sure to have some lucrative patents floating around out there. Not to mention the fact that the Foundation has also reclaimed and repurposed anomalous technology that surpasses even their own, which may influence some incredibly profitable consumer goods further down the line. 
which is a nice segue to the next portion of this video. Utilizing captured anomalies for fun and profit. What? Well, mostly profit in this case. That. This is the much more fun and theoretical half of things, where we speculate on which SCPs would bring in the biggest bucks to- Oh, yeah, bro. I knew they were exploiting some of the SCPs to get some money, like, um, what's a good one? Like that couch that can grant any wish in life. I feel like they would probably profit off of that, like, I don't know. I don't know. A hundred copies of a PlayStation 5 or something like that. Yeah, I can see, yeah. To fill the coffers of the SCP Foundation. And of course, stick around to the Very end for the most apartment. important money-making method of all. It won't be what you expect. First, SCP-096. We know what you're thinking, how do we monetize a mindless killing machine? Simple. We stand someone in front of it and make them look at its face, then position 096 onto a treadmill attached to a series of powerful generators. Given that 096 literally never gets tired, we will have invented a true perpetual motion machine, and the energy generated by this could replace Yo. the municipal power grid. That surely got to be worth a few bucks, right? The United States government, the foundation awaits your call. Okay, okay, let's get a little more serious. Have you ever heard the expression, a penny saved is a penny earned? Because as previously discussed, one of the major costs of the foundation is labor. However, SCP-662, the butler's handbell that summons the unfailingly loyal Mr. Deeds, could solve this issue. You may be thinking, sure, Mr. Deeds can replace the labor of a couple people, but not that many. He's got physical limitations. Yeah. To which we would answer, what about SCP-662 put through SCP-914 the clockworks on fine? We'd oh, wager that this might snap. lead to a bell that summons an even more effective Mr. Deeds, or better yet, multiple Mr. Deeds. You could only imagine the money oh the SCP Foundation God. would save. Upon request, Yo. he can also manifest bricks of pure gold. He's a butler that literally pays for himself. But enough about Mr. Deeds. Let's talk about you. Are you happy? Fulfilled? Do you know why you're here? A lot of people struggle with finding a sense of purpose in life. It can make it difficult to form and actualize your goals. If only it was easy to know your greatest desire, so you could finally get your life together and start working on it. Thankfully, the Foundation could- Don't tell me- oh boy. They're really gonna use the SCP as a therapeutic- okay. Help. For a price. What? You can't blame them for a little hashtag hustle. With SCP-978, the desire camera, they could help people figure out what their deepest desire is. But that's not the only way to make money from this anomalous device. By taking pictures of the rich and powerful, and seeing if their desires are compromising, humiliating, or even illegal, you can quickly solicit some very generous donations out of them in exchange for keeping this juicy information under wraps. Podcasts are big these days, with incredibly popular ones like the Joe Rogan Experience getting around 11 million downloads per episode. People love hearing a compelling interview or a good story. That's why, to make a little money on the side, we recommend the Foundation give SCP-1867, a talkative telepathic sea slug who goes by me, Lord bro? Blackwood, his own podcast, where he would spin wild yarns, interview celebrity guests, and perhaps even host chats with other interesting SCPs. All while the Foundation cleans up on sweet, sweet podcast sponsorship revenue. What, are you telling us you wouldn't tune in? I would. SCP-5094, oh, yeah. Miss J's Whiz Kid Schoolhouse, could also be converted into expensive, over-the-counter proprietary software. Think of the money that companies like Skillshare and Masterclass rake in. Miss J could guarantee perfect learning through her intensive courses, and once the word of her efficacy spreads, she might even replace traditional higher education. And who would be the financial beneficiary? The SCP Foundation. Then there's SCP-2430, the immortal Hitler clone. He's unable to die, but feels pain at a heightened degree of sensitivity than most normal people. He's also, um, well, no getting around. Don't tell me you're gonna try to use him to profit off of, like, people paying to torture him or something like that. Watch this. Don't, don't tell this, Hitler. And if the Foundation were able to go public about the existence of this clone, they could also take him out on tour across the globe. Oh my... I knew it. Charge 10 to 15 bucks to punch him. People would be lining up to take a crack at the ex-Führer, and the Foundation would, of course, be the sole financial beneficiaries. Now, let's talk about pizza. The most popular pizza chain in the United States, as of this writing, is Domino's, with annual revenue of just over $14 billion. What we're wondering is, why doesn't the SCP Foundation want a slice of that lucrative pizza pie? 
After all, they're in possession of SCP-458, the never-ending pizza box. With the help of this bad boy, capable of producing nearly limitless quantities of pizza, they could surely start making a pretty pepperoni penny. Lego products are also a multi-billion dollar industry, pointing towards a clear desire in the market for these charming, colorful blocks. And there's no Lego like SCP-387, the living Lego. Hardcore Lego enthusiasts all over the world would pay through the nose to experience a product like this. And seeing as they're completely safe, in both SCP nomenclature and the more colloquial sense of the phrase, the Foundation wouldn't need to worry about any lawsuits from concerned parents. They'd only need to worry about where to put all their fancy new stacks of cold hard cash. For those desiring a little escapism, the Foundation could rent out SCP-1230, A Hero is Born. This book takes its readers on fabulous bespoke dream adventures through fantastical lands, and will surely give them an experience that will last long after they finally Oh yeah, comment down below which one would you pay for in real life? Like, which SCP would you, like, yeah. Uh, I'd probably choose this one. This one sounds pretty good. The book. Wake up. In a world where people are willing to pay top dollar for VR experiences and creepy Facebook metaverses, being able to enter the wondrous land of dreams is a welcome low-tech solution that would still likely make the SCP Foundation boatloads of new income. However, we live in a stressful world. Modern life has come with its wealth of new personal issues, from work troubles to the dating game, and connectivity has come at the cost of having an ever greater awareness of the troubles that plague the world at large. With costs making a lot of valuable therapy and medications unavailable to many, it's no wonder that we're undergoing a global mental health crisis. But the Foundation has a solution, SCP-999. Spend long enough time with him and he'll straight up cure everything from depression to PTSD. People all over the world would pay top dollar to achieve an immediate and effective cure to all mental maladies that only takes a few hours and has no negative side effects. Like the ultimate therapy dog, the foundation would be rolling in the dough from an opportunity like this. And of course, the most devious, ingenious, and overall effective method that the SCP Foundation could possibly use to make money is creating YouTube channels that pretend to just be sharing the fictional monsters and entities of a made-up online fiction project, when in fact, they're actually secretly leaking the highly classified secrets of their own organization, while selling adorable, high-quality merchandise of some of the most lovable and iconic creatures. We can't think of any method more valuable than Okay, yeah, I watched the video on, um, to explain that little situation. That. Anyway, on a completely different note, did you know that you can get your very own adorable SCP-999 plushie pictured hey. here looking cute as all heck? All you need to do is visit www.scpswag.com, and you can have your very own Tickle Monster to hug anytime you please. And, of course, if there are any other highly profitable anomalies you'd like to see in plush form, do take the time to make your suggestions heard down in the comments. Now, if you'll excuse us, we need to head off. After all, time is money. Now go check out SCP uh, Foundation Boss The Administrator Explained and- Wow, that was very interesting. For all that money. But, um, yeah. <clears throat> um, if you liked it, like, comment, and subscribe. And, goodbye.